And that is my number one tip and the one thing that I think you absolutely have to do if you want to do well in step. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Logan and welcome to my channel. I'm a third year medical student just trying to share some of my experiences and maybe help some people out along the way. And today I'm going to talk about my USMLE step one experience, um, my workflow, how I set up my days and how exactly I studied. So if you want to see how to tarnish your mental health while studying for a single test, stay tuned. Before I start, if you find any of this stuff interesting, be sure to like the video and subscribe. So if you don't know, USMLE step one is the first board exam medical students take usually at the end of their second year. And generally the school will give you like seven to eight weeks off just to study for the test. And it's probably one of the most important tests you're ever going to take because what score you get essentially controls the rest of your life. So if you do well, you can go into competitive specialties and essentially keep all of the doors open that you want to. And if you don't do so well, it could potentially close some of those doors. So it's a very important test and how you study depends one on how well you want to do and two, when you want to start studying. And the way I see it, there's essentially three ways to approach it. One, you can just wait until the dedicated time starts and just use the first year and the second year to just focus on the classes and then start knocking out questions and knocking out all kinds of study stuff when the actual dedicated time starts. Two, you can can start doing some general content review for your second year and just touch up a little bit of the subject so you have a decent little foundation to get started with. Or three, you can keep up with your Anki cards and do a question bank before Dedicate starts. And all these have advantages and their disadvantages. Like everyone likes different things, but I personally recommend number three. So what did I do? So starting the second year, I had a decent amount of the pre-made Anki deck called Zonki done. And I wanted to be sure that I could get through at least one question bank before Dedicate started. And the one I picked was USMLE RX. And I picked it mainly because it's supposed to be just a general content review question bank. So it's either you know it or you don't. And then if you don't know it, you can learn it. Plus it had all these really cool features. So it had this study stream thing, which lets you set up your schedule for how you want to study. It had this browse section for first aid where you could literally just look over to the other part of the screen and then just look through whatever first aid stuff you need to look through. And, and it had these little express videos. So every section of first aid had a little two to three minute clip of video without someone explaining what's going on. Cause let's be honest, at least 90% of the time, I had no idea what I was doing. And it was great. Um, it takes a little bit more time. It's like a 2000 question bank. But if you do like 20, 30 questions a day starting second year, you'll probably finish it no problem. And then you'll hopefully have a decent foundation to start dedicated with. Okay, now for the fun stuff. So what did I do during my seven to eight weeks of dedicated study time? So a little rundown of what I needed to accomplish in that time. One, I need to finish the entire UWorld question bank, which is about 3000 questions. Two, I need to take every MBME practice test plus the other UWorld practice test, which I think a total there were nine. I need to keep up with my Anki flashcard reviews. And then of course I need to study up on whatever else I was weak at. So the original plan I had was just to do my Anki flashcards in the morning. I get there, knock those out, and then do some URL questions, review them. And then with whatever time left I had in the day, I would just fill in any knowledge gaps that I wanted to fill in that I didn't know from that day. But that didn't last very long. Anki was taking up a lot more time than I thought. URL questions were taking up so much longer than I ever imagined they would ever take to review. And I ended up spending like at least two hours to review just a set of 40 questions. So I needed a new plan. And this is what I came up with. So from six to 7 a.m., I would just wake up, get ready, eat my breakfast, and just kind of get the start to the day. And then from 7 to 7.30, I will drive to school, get to my spot in the library, and then have everything set up, ready to study. And from 7.30 to 8.30, I would knock out a 40 question block, and then I'll take a 10 minute break, and then I do another 40 question block, and then I take another 10 minute break, and then I do another 40 question block. And then after that, I would have my three blocks done for the day, and then I would take a 40 minute break for lunch from 10.50 to about 11.30. And because those reviews were taking so long, I would spend literally from 11.30 to 5.30 p.m. just reviewing the questions that I'd gone through that day. And I'll talk a little bit more about how I actually review the questions a little later in the video. And then once I finish reviewing those questions, then I'll take like a, a dinner, I guess, from 5.30 to six. And then after that, I would go knock out my Anki cards from like six-ish to eight. And then by the time eight hit, I was already ready to go. And then I'd go home and then I would get home at about 8.30, then I'd shower, um, eat again because I eat a lot and then sleep and then just do it all over again the next day. And not every day was exactly like that because I had to mix in practice tests every once in a while and then I also had to mix in my crying sessions. But for the most part, I tried to stick to that from Monday to Friday. And then on Saturday mornings, I would schedule a practice test. So then I'd get there in the morning, same spot in the library, consistency is key. And I would do the 200 question practice test from eight to whenever I'd finish, usually like at one, 1.30. And then I would eat lunch with whoever I was taking the practice test with. Side note, a um, little bit of a tangent, but I have to include this because I think it's really important. I forgot to put it in the original video. So I didn't do any of this alone. All of this was with the team, 
with a lot of other people because it can get very stressful and you can get very isolated if you try to spend this entire eight week period by yourself. And, and learning by yourself is not at all the best way to learn these things. Like, yeah, of course you wanna go through, learn the majority of the stuff by yourself, learn what you can. But then when you have topics that you really, really can't get in your brain, just talking about them out loud with a one person, a group of people, and just the act of saying it out loud will really help it stick. Okay, rant over, back to the video. And then we eat for like an hour, complain about the test, and then get back to reviewing the questions. And we try to do this until about six, or essentially until we couldn't do it anymore. And then about six to eight, again, I'll try to get the Anki cards done from the rest of the day. And then on Sunday, we get back again, and then we just finish reviewing whatever we didn't finish from the day before, from the practice test on Saturday. And then I would essentially use Sunday just catch up on anything else that I didn't get done during the week. So if I didn't finish my 120 questions a day, or if I didn't finish all the flashcards on one of the days, or if there's just some content that I need to catch up on, then I would essentially use Sunday to catch up on it. And then if I could, I would try to squeeze in like another 40, 60 Yugo questions and just try to get those reviewed. And speaking of reviewing questions, this is probably the single most important part of studying for step, hands down. And that's just because this is where most of the learning happens with questions. The literature shows that questions and doing multiple question banks is the most high yield thing you could possibly do. And there isn't really anything you have to do during dedicated because of course everyone does things differently. But reviewing questions is so, so, so important. So I'm saying it again. Because if they ask you a question on one topic, they will 100% ask you a question about the same topic in a different way. Or they'll just ask you another piece of that same topic. Like if they ask you a question about glycogen storage diseases and you get one right, you can't just be like, oh no, I got that question right. Yeah, I know glycogen storage diseases. Because they will ask you every single other one and they will find the one you don't know and they will ask about it. I don't know what kind of mind powers these test writers have, but they will find what you don't know and they will put it on the test, guaranteed. So don't be that guy that just assumes you got the question right and just moves right on. Because I can almost guarantee that in every single answer explanation, there is at least one thing that you don't know. So even if you do know the answer and you know it really well, at the very least, read through the explanation, read through what they say about each other answer and why it's incorrect, and try to make a point to learn at least one thing from every single question you do. And that is my number one tip and the one thing that I think you absolutely have to do if you wanna do well in step. Okay, so where was I? Um, yes, finishing questions. So if I did the 120 a day, and then like the 40 to 60 on Sunday, then that would put me in about 650 a week, and then I'd be able to finish the entire question bank in about four and a half, like five-ish weeks. And when I did finish it, I had about three weeks left until I actually had to take the real test. And I was doing okay content-wise, like I mean, of course there's things I still need to brush up on. But my main weakness was stamina. I had this trend on every single practice test that I took that I would do pretty well in the first block, pretty well in the second block, and then it just absolutely tanked the second half of the test. So I was like, what is going on? Why is this happening to me? So I talked to some friends and we decided to make a plan where we just focus mainly on building endurance. Because if I can't handle a five hour test and I'm getting tired through that, then there's no way I'm gonna be able to handle a full eight hour test on the day of. So the new plan was just to reset the entire URL question bank and then try to finish it again before the actual test day. And this is good really for two Two reasons. One, because there was a lot of questions I missed that I really needed to see again. And two, because this would allow me to do more questions per day and hopefully build up a little bit of stamina and then prevent some of the fatigue. And it really wasn't even that bad because doing the questions a second time was a lot faster. But honestly, seeing over 3,000 questions, there's no way you're gonna remember every single question and answer. So it's still pretty productive. And then doing like 160 to 200 a day, let me finish in like 14, 15 ish days. So by the time I finished my second pass of your world, I had exactly eight days until my test. And at that point, I had one full length practice test left. I had one shorter 120 question practice test left to take and I had about 200 incorrect questions from the second time I went through your world that I still needed to redo. So I had my test on a Friday and I was able to finish all that stuff by Tuesday, which just left Wednesday to cram whatever else I could into my brain. So at the end of first day, they have this rapid review section with a lot of really high yield stuff and they actually have Anki flashcards already made for that. So on the Wednesday before my test, so two days before, I went through that entire Anki deck and just crammed it. And after that on Wednesday, I crammed the rest of the U world bio stats questions just to really stay sharp on those formulas. And then I just went over the biochem stuff just one more time, talked it out loud with a friend just to really stay sharp on that stuff also because that stuff is really easy to forget. And I wanted to see those at least one more time as close to the test as I possibly could. And then I took Thursday to just hang out, relax, maybe flip through a couple notes that I just really want to see one more time. But for the most part, Thursday was just a recharge, relax, and just get your mind right kind of day. And then I woke up on Friday, drove to the testing center, took the test, and then that was that. So overall, I think it was a good experience. I mean, I know it's not perfect. I know it's not the perfect schedule, but if there's anything you would change on my schedule or you think there's anything that I did that was really, really stupid, then please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. And congrats for making it to the end of the video. I do actually have a poll for you. I need your help. So I have two video ideas for what I'm gonna do next. One is gonna be my test day routine. So like what did I do on the actual test day on that Friday that I take the test? So like what snacks I bring, what I drink, how do I utilize the breaks, uh, stuff like that. And two, I actually got married during the first week of dedicated study. So if you wanna hear about that, then also let me know in the comments.
All right, again, thanks for making it to the end of the video and I'll see you next time.